Okay, here we have um, chapter eight, eight section eight point seven. This is product to sum and some of the product formulas. And they went over a lot of proofs in the previous section, so they kind of gave us a break here a little bit with the proofs. Um, we kind of can see how things are developed and how identities and theorems are formed. So now we can kind of like trust them that this is actually in fact an identity. The left hand side does equal the right hand side no matter what alpha or beta are. And so then this section we're really just going to be using the application of this theorem. Okay. So it says, for example, one express the products as sums. So then I notice that I have sine and sine. So then that means I'm going to be using the first option up here. So when I do that, three theta is like my alpha and seven theta is like my beta. So I get one half bracket cosine of three theta minus seven theta minus cosine of three theta plus seven theta. And so then if I simplify inside those angles there, I get cosine of negative four theta minus cosine of 10 theta. And then if I use my even and odd properties, I know that the cosine of a negative angle is the same as the cosine of the positive angle. And so then this is all that they go with it. They don't go any further than this. They just want this expression in the computer as your final answer. Okay, and they just wanna make sure that you can apply those product to sum formulas. Now for now, they might seem um, unimportant or non-useful, things like that. Um, but in calculus, it is much easier to work with a sum or a difference than it is to work with a product. So there may be some benefit to knowing these formulas later when you get to calculus. Okay, another one here, it has cosine theta, cosine phi theta. So in that case, I'm gonna be using the second formula. And the second formula says one half cosine, this being my alpha, this being my beta. So theta minus phi theta plus cosine of theta plus phi theta. So we get one half cosine of negative four theta plus cosine of six theta. And again, we can use our even and odd properties. So the cosine of negative four theta is the same as the cosine of positive four theta because cosine is an even function, right? And this is as far as they want us to go with this expression. They just wanted us to turn it into a sum or difference, okay? So then now the last one is sine and cosine. So that would be the third one of our formulas up there. So when I convert that one, it's one half sine of alpha plus beta, so two theta plus seven theta plus sine of alpha minus beta. And so then here, when I simplify that angle, I get nine theta. And here I get sine of negative five theta. If I use my even and odd properties here, we know that the sine of a negative angle is the same as the negative sine of the positive angle because sine is an odd function. So then if I rewrite that, it's actually sine of nine theta minus sine of five theta. And this is the expression that they'll want in the calculator. I'm sorry, couldn't see that. This is the expression that they want. They don't want the double signs, they just want a single, um, Find there. So let's go ahead and see what we have for the um, sum to product. Okay. Sometimes you might, um, in calculus especially, you might perform whatever it is that you're trying to perform with the sum, but then in the end, when you look at the back of the book in calculus, you might notice that they're written in this manner. Okay. And so if that's the case, then 
um, you need to know this formula to know how they got this kinds of answers as the final answer in the back of the book. Sometimes when we simplify things, it's nicer to have things in a product form, especially when fractions are involved, because then you can reduce those fractions by um, one of these trig functions, okay? So let's go ahead and apply these theorems. So we have different ones. We have sine plus sine, sine minus sine, cosine plus cosine, and then cosine minus cosine. So these are all the different variations of what we could see. So let's go ahead and apply the first one. The first one has sine minus sine. So that is actually going to be the second formula here, sine minus sine. So we're gonna plug it into this formula. So I get two sine of alpha minus beta, so four theta minus six theta over two, and then cosine of alpha plus beta over two. And so then we get two, this would be negative two theta divided by two is negative theta, but I just totally dropped my sign. So inside this parentheses, you get negative theta. In here, you get 10 theta divided by two is five theta. And then if I use my even and odd properties, this becomes a negative sign, but times two will make it negative two. And now the angle is positive. And this is what they'll wanna see in the um, answer inside my labs plus. So now we have another one. We don't have all four as examples, but we do have another one, cosine plus cosine, which is actually the third one. So we'll apply that. We get two cosine of alpha plus beta over two, and then cosine of alpha minus beta over two. Again, I forgot my trig function. Here I get 10 divided by two, which is five theta. Here I get negative six divided by two, which is negative three theta. And I can apply my even and odd properties. So the cosine of a negative angle is the same as the positive cosine of the positive angle. And so this is what they'll wanna see as the answer in the MyWebs Plus. Now I did have a couple of extra problems that I saw in the MyLabs Plus that we haven't talked about. And they are the other two formulas that we didn't get to, right? And then they even had a problem with numbers in there. So like our problems where we had products, they didn't have numbers, they just had um, everything in terms of theta. But you can apply a, some, a product to some formula, even when there's numbers. It's just this is going to be alpha and this is going to be beta. So sine and cosine, sine and cosine means I have to use this bottom formula. So I'm gonna have one half and then sine of alpha, which is 165 degrees, plus beta, which is 175 degrees, plus sine of alpha minus beta. And so when I simplify this, I actually get sine of 240 degrees plus sine of 90 degrees. I don't, I don't know why I have a seven here. It should be 165. So then let's see, sine of 240, it is in degree mode, is it? Yeah. So I can hit enter and it gives me negative square root of three over two plus sine of 90 degrees is one. And if I distribute my half, I get negative square root of three over four plus one half. If I get a common, a like term, you might see the answer written as two minus square root of three over four. 
because in order to make this common denominator, you'll have to multiply by two and two, which will make it two over four. But then because it's positive, they write the positive term in the front and then the negative term in the back. And so this might be how you see the answer inside my labs plus or on a test or a review. Now, these are the same thing as we were doing before, the sum or difference to a product, but it's using the other two formulas that we didn't get to. So for cosine minus cosine, we actually have this formula here, which has a negative two. So let's go ahead and apply this formula. We get negative two sine, this one's gonna be weird because this is alpha and this is beta. So nine theta over two plus 11 theta over two, but that whole thing needs to be over two. So it gets a little weird. And then sine of nine theta over two minus 11 theta over two over two. So here we're gonna get um, 20, that's going to be 20 theta over 2 over 2, which is 10 theta over 2, which is 5 theta. Then over here, you get sine of minus is going to give me negative 2 theta over 2 over 2. And then this is going to give me negative theta over 2. And then the negative I can factor out. So it becomes negative sine of theta over 2. And so then the final response is going to be the negative times the negative, which makes positive sine of 5 theta, sine of theta over 2. So I definitely wanted to address this one because there was some weird stuff happening with the fractions. Um, and then you still end up with a fraction here and it has to stay a fraction. And then that negative does need to get multiplied by this negative. So the last one we have is sine plus sine equal to zero. And this one they want me to solve it. So before I can solve it, um, I am gonna use this to get to a product because once I have a product equal to zero, I can just set each factor of the product equal to zero to find my solutions. So for this one, um, I'm actually going to apply the theorem first. So I get two sine of theta, or no, I'm sorry, alpha plus beta, alpha being four theta and beta being two theta, and then cosine of alpha minus theta. still equal to zero. So we get two sine that is six divided by two, three theta, and cosine of um, two theta over two, which is just theta equal to zero. And so they do tell us that they want all the solutions. So they need to be between zero and two pi with two pi not included, okay? So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this factor, equal it to zero, and we're gonna take this factor and equal it to zero. Now if I divide by two, I just have sine of three theta equal to zero. Here it's still cosine theta equal to three zero. We need sine equal to zero. If I look on my unit circle, um, y value, where is the y value equal to zero? It would be here at zero pi and then two pi, but two pi is not included. So when three theta is um, pi k. So if k is zero, this is zero. If k is one, this is one, so on and so forth. But, you could put zero plus pi k if you wanted to, but it doesn't make a difference. So then if I divide both sides by three, I actually get the theta is pi over three k. So 
that means for k equal to zero, we get zero times pi over three is zero. For k equal to one, we get theta equals um, two, or no, just pi over three. For k equal to two, we get theta equal to two pi over three. For k equal to three, we get theta equal to three pi over three, which is just pi. For k equal to four, we get theta equal to four pi over three. For k equal to five, we get five pi over three. And for k equal to six, we get six pi over three, which is two pi. But two pi is not included in the interval. Oh, you can't see anything that I'm doing there. So all I'm doing is plugging in zero, I get zero, plug in one, I get pi thirds, plug in two, I get two pi thirds, plug in three, threes cancel, I get pi, plug in four, I get four pi over three, plug in five, I get five pi over three, and then plug in six, that will reduce to two pi. Two pi is not in the interval. So those are all the answers within this interval for the first factor. And we also got to worry about the second factor. So when is cosine equal to zero? When is the x value equal to zero? That happens when the angle is pi over two plus um, pi k, because it happens the x value is equal to zero here at pi over two and at three pi over two and then the next, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, so on and so forth. So it just keeps going back and forth. Um, therefore, and we don't need to solve for theta because theta is already by itself. So when k equals 0, it's going to be just pi over 2. When k equals 1, it is pi over 2 plus pi, which is 3 pi over 2. When k equals two, it is pi over two plus two pi. Well, obviously if I'm adding two pi to this, it's going to be bigger than two pi. So five pi over two is bigger than two pi, which is outside the interval. So this won't, this won't uh, be a solution. And I don't need to find the others because those are all gonna be greater than this one. So they're all gonna be outside of that interval. So then my answers are going to be these guys here. So zero, pi over three, two pi over three, four pi over three, five pi over three, pi over two, and three pi over two. All of those will be our solutions, okay? Now, if you're doing a multiple choice test or review, They'll have all of these, but they might be in a different order. But all you have to do is make sure that every single one of the ones that you have as solutions are in fact there in all of the choices. Because the choices may just have these, it may have just these, it may have just those two, it may have a couple of these, but not all of them, right? So you definitely need to make sure that you've got the right um, solution set there when you're doing a multiple choice. But other than that, that is the end of 8.7.